This screencast is on the balance of payments. For this one, what we're going to be looking at are the current accounts and the financial capital accounts and the different categories that fall underneath each of them. Um, the key word here is balance for balance of payments because when we look at the different components, what we need to have happen in the end is that the current account must equal in value the financial capital account so that they balance. So when we're talking about the current and the capital account, for the current account there's two different ways that you can classify things. They can either be a credit where they're adding value to our current account or there is a debit where it is subtracting. When I think about current accounts, I think about like tangible items, goods and services that are being produced. So the first one to look at here is an export. With exports, these are goods that we make that we ship out to another country. So this would be a credit to the current account because we will be receiving money for the goods and services that we are providing. When we think about what that means for the currency, we need to think about the money. In order for a foreign country to be able to buy our products, they have to supply their currency because they have to buy them with US dollars. And so the demand for US dollars goes up. The key here when you're looking at what to do with the different currencies is that an increase in supply for one country is an increase in demand for the other. So after we look here at exports, now we can talk about imports. Imports are goods or services that we're importing into this country. And so therefore, this would be a debit to the current account because we are buying other countries' goods. So when we think about that, the demand for currency is going to be in foreign currency because we need that to buy the imported goods. So we will supply the US dollars in order to obtain the foreign currency. Another component of the current account are income payments. Income payments are payments for the financial assets like stocks and bonds and loans and bank deposits. Keyword there is payments, and so therefore it's a debit because we are purchasing these financial assets in another country. If it's a debit, that means then that we have to supply the U.S. dollars in order to obtain the foreign currency to buy the um, different types of financial assets. The last one here for the current account are unilateral transfer payments. Unilateral means it's going one way. Transfer, we're not getting a good or a service, we're just giving money. Think of it if somebody migrates over here from another country and they have family members that are back home, they may take the money that they've earned here in the United States and send it home to give money to their family members. If, we, if a person is sending money back to another country, that would be a debit to the current account because they are supplying the U.S. dollars and the family members will convert those over to the foreign currency to be able to purchase the goods and services there. So these are some of the major examples of the current account. On the other side of the balance of payments is the financial capital account. And this again is dealing with money um, when I think about the financial institutions and the loanable funds market, I'm dealing with the financial capital account. One example of something in the financial capital account are um, US owned assets abroad. So we need to do the same thing where we look at the credit and the debit and we need to classify it. Um, and if, we, if the US owns assets abroad, the, that is money that we're investing in another country. We're buying their um, factories, we're using their capital. And so therefore, this would be a debit to our financial capital account because we're not going to see that money multiplying here in the United States. If it is a debit, to the capital account. That means that the U.S. is supplying their dollars in order to obtain the foreign currency um, that they are demanding. 
There can also, though, be where you have foreign-owned assets in the United States. You have different um, foreign companies that are investing here in the United States. They're using our land, labor, capital, and as a result then, that is money that is being circulated and multiplied in the United States. If it is a credit on the balance of payments, then what that means then is that they are supplying their foreign currency because they have to pay for everything here in the United States with the U.S. dollars. The balance of payments, you have to have an equal amount between the current account and the financial capital account. If after you have added up all of the credits and debits of the current account, and you've added up all of the credits and debits of the financial capital account. If the current account has a larger number than the financial capital account, then the government will step in. And the government makes the final balancing act between the financial capital account and current account by either buying or selling reserves with another country. If the current account is larger than the financial capital account, then they need to have credit of reserves on the financial side. And the way that you do that is by selling U U.S. bonds to foreign countries. So that way then they will supply their currency to demand our dollars to be able to buy the official reserves. If the financial account is larger, you need to bring it down in order to meet with the current account. And so as a result, then the government will invest in foreign currencies of another country and, and they will buy their reserves and they will have to supply the U.S. dollars in order to demand the foreign currency to be able to pay for it. So when you are looking at things, you need to be able to put into the different categories what falls into the current account and what falls into the capital account. You need to recognize if it's a credit or if it's a debit and then what that does to the demand and supply of foreign currency and also U.S. currency. The final balancing act is the official reserves because they are the ones that will make the current account equal the financial capital account.